Hey guys, well it's time to talk about jesters. To begin with, let's define who these jesters are. In the old days, well long before Poppet was invented, ugly usually short people were called jesters. They lived in manor houses or at the court of kings. Jesters were supposed to make the guests and their hosts laugh, but if you think that this was invented in the internetless middle ages, think again. In fact, even in the tribes, they singled out some guys who were supposed to make their fellows laugh during the holidays. And outside of the holidays, they monitored the observance of order and tribal taboos. So jesters are probably one of the world's oldest professions. Sorry, babe. Whatever. Like in any profession, jesters had distinctive attributes. A hat with three or two ears. Two symbolize the ears of a donkey and three the ears and a tail. Also, jesters traditionally wore bright and colorful clothes, combining contrasting colors, and most of them had a special staff and obligatory attribute of a jester called a merit. This wand, with a knob in the form of a carved head of a laughing buffoon, was not just an anti-scepter of the jester, but also his companion, someone to talk to, his partner. Also, the knob was often made from a bull's bladder with peas inside. Before going on stage, the jester shook this rattling staff. But... That's not all. The staff served as an instrument of humiliation. The jesters used them to beat those they laughed at. And given that the staff was often considered a symbol of the phallus, not only because of the resemblance, but also because of the pea was a symbol of fertility, it was even more humiliating. Even though there were many jesters, only a few of them entered history. So meet Spaniard Francis de Zuniga, an ordinary tailor. Francis first became a jester to Duke Alvar de Zuniga, and it was at that moment that he took his last name. And then in 1522, he made Emperor Charles V laugh so much that the emperor immediately gave him the job at his court. Since Francis was not a fool, he began to write chronicles, which was popular in those days, where he invented his own history of the universe, mixing Greek myths and Egyptian gods, while casually arguing that everything from the very beginning was run by his ancestors. And he did it so finely and funnily that all of Spain read his burlesque chronicle. There's no reliable data on the further history of Francis, but according to one source, having served at the court of the king, he then became the main guardian of the order where he was killed by two unknown people. Oh my god, what happened? It's okay, senora. They just killed your husband, that's all. So, it turns out that Francis served two masters, just like the famous Tribule. Baby Nicholas Ferriol was born in 1479 in Blois, where the royal court often hung out. At first, Tribule was a jester at the court of Louis XII, but the king kicked the bucket right in his bed. Well, because of great efforts. And then Tribule was inherited by Louis's cousin, Francis. At this time, the jester received universal recognition. Tribule, of course, enjoyed kicking asses of courtiers of all stripes, including women. But actually, the king appreciated him for his evil tongue and witty comments about the people around the king. The only person Francis forbade Tribule to joke about was his wife. Did Tribule comply with the king's order? Of course not! Hey, do you know who will star in G.I. Jane 2? Who? Your wife! <laughs> hey, hey, what the hell are you doing? Keep my wife's name behind your close freaking mouth. All right? One day, Francis, but most likely his wife, was fed up with all these mockeries, and he decided to execute the jester. But as a nobleman, he gave Tribule a choice of what to die from. And what did our witty Tribule choose? Old age. Actually, almost no jokes of Tribule have survived to this day, but as a character, he began to appear in various works back in the 16th century. So he's mentioned in Gargantua and Pantagruel. Hugo came up with the story of Tribule and described it in the play The King Amuses Himself, and then Giuseppe Verdi staged the opera Rigoletto based on it. Even Dumas called Tribule an Ascanino. And that's not even the whole list. By the way, Tribule died in exile at the age of 57, from his sentence to old age. Yes, old age at that time was somewhere in those numbers, which is five years longer than both his kings had. But do you know who holds the record for the number of kings he's served? Being the most famous court jester? Jean-Antoine d'Angleray, popularly known as Chico. Chico began his career in the army under Francis II and achieved significant success. Then he continued under Charles IX, but was demoted to jester. And as a jester, he also served Henry III, and even the fourth. But what is so special about this guy, you might think? Well, he was the only one of the jesters who wore a sword, and skillfully used it. 
He was the head of the guard of the castle of Lochet for some time. According to some reports, he was involved in the murder of Huguenot leaders. He fought for the king. He was the main confidant and the king's notebook. And in 1584, he was granted an aristocratic title. And if that's not enough for you, he has also been a character in many books and films. But he didn't die in peacetime or in a peaceful environment. During a siege, Chicot captured Count Henry de Cellini. Realizing how cool the guy who took him prisoner was, the Count decided not to miss the opportunity and leave a mark on history. So he stabbed our jester with his sword. See how important it is to find your calling? These jesters were not just some TikTokers, they were all confidants of the king. They could save the king by telling the unpleasant truth on his behalf. They could disrupt the meeting that the king didn't like. Actually, they had incredible power, for which many hated them and even attempted to kill them. Since an appropriate joke often made the rulers change their minds without losing face, the kings always appreciated their jesters, and some even tried to protect them. For example, in the 11th century, the Chinese emperor sent two of his princes to save the jester from assassins sent by the first minister Wang Anshi. The jester ridiculed the minister all evening until finally Wang Anshi couldn't stand it anymore. Fortunately, the princes were close by. They took the jester to the inner chamber of the palace in time. Since then, there's a saying, the chief minister is still a couple of the jester. By the way, do you ever remember all the sayings that I say? If you do, good for you. If you don't, who cares? Fine, let's move on. Well, you all probably looked at these guys and thought how cool it was to be a jester, right? Wrong. Most jesters were persecuted and pursued by the authorities. Jesters were forbidden to be within city walls. They were deprived their rights. They could be beaten or even killed with impunity. Well, some were saved by the fact that the jester was revered by the people as a creature not of this world. Like, he fell under the jurisdiction of other forces. Not ordinary, but supernatural. As if he was marked by God, or the devil, or in a local mental hospital. Everything depended on the momentary interpretation. Well, that's all for today. This has been Brock Lee, and thanks for watching. Well guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment if you liked the video. If not, all the same, it doesn't really make any difference.